Laughing Monkey Music Show, Toy Von Lauren. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Or do we call you the real guitar goddess? That is your your sign on name, right? To most of yeah. your your socials. Yeah, how I'm known. I've been following you for a while. I enjoy your guitar playing. Um, I don't follow a lot of people playing guitar, but I've been enjoying your your your, your playing for a while now. You have a couple endorsements. You do a couple things, and you're actually are you you're looking for a band too, right? Aren't you? Or to play yeah. projects? Yeah. All right. Definitely. So, so people maybe uh, they can contact you on socials for that. You're you're very rock based, especially '80s based. Definitely. And you've been playing for a while. Let's roll it back a little bit. You grew up in a house of '80s music, or is that just your own your own gig? No, definitely grew up in a house of '80s music. Yeah. My. Dad is big into like everything that's '80s related. Okay, so you grew up with a lot of rock. I mean, my kids did too, but not all of them are showing it. <laughs> <laughs> Went the other way, actually. So maybe they were adopted. Um, <laughs> guitar playing. So you started early. What's uh, how long you been playing? Yeah, so I started around the age of eight, and then. Um, I used to just play like country music, if I'm being honest. And then uh, my dad uh, brought me downstairs one day and was like, I have to show you, you know, these 80s band. And he pulled up like Rat, Vixen, um, Hanoi Rocks, like all those bands. And after that, I just fell in love. It was instant. Literally sounds like you're, you're mentioning my guest list I've had lately. Um, <laughs> <laughs> obviously, I grew up on it too, so I love them also. Um You've also been interacting with a bunch of like musicians actually been reaching out to you. Yeah. What's what's going on with that? How's that happening? Like like I think Tracy Guns at one point, I think um fit some props. So Tracy, I actually do take guitar lessons from him. So he follows me and tries to support what I do. Um and then a lot of them have just found my page because I'll post covers and then I'll tag them. And then they really seem to, I guess, like that someone young is playing their music. So they like to interact with that. I'm going to say on a side note, looking at your timeline of music, you're the only other person besides, well, me, whose hair seems to change in every video, the length. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't shoot, but I don't shoot in order. And that's what my thing is. But you have like full new hairstyles. So, so props for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um. So let's talk about you and your songwriting. So uh, actually, first off, let's talk about your, your gear. What do you got for gear? What's your guitar? What's your setup? Um, so obviously, since I have the, I'm have i a Gibson artist, I've been using my Gibson Les Paul, and uh, they just sent me a Kramer SM1. And then so I just bought an MX-5 board because before I was using a Boss Distortion pedal and a couple other ones, but I'm really excited to try the MX-5. From Headrush. Are you a uh, stock? Everything's st stock. Um... Uh, yeah, for the most part. For the most part. Well, it's, it's interesting because some artists totally go with exactly. They're like, yeah, right off the rack. I played as it is, and and they have their own sound either way. And some people are like, nope, strip it down totally. You know, they do their own thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm more. I. <sighs> I don't know. I always got told that the sound really came from the player. So I always was focused on practicing as opposed to buying all this gear and everything else. It is. It's, it's very important. I think one of the best things I've heard is um, a lot of artists have played with Eddie Van Halen. And then they've, they've all told me like in different stories, you know, <clears throat> Eddie's got his rig, he plays it. It's great. He says, here, you know, I play. He goes, does not sound like Eddie Van Halen, whatever. <laughs> and then yeah. they're like, they're like, and he plays my guitar. He goes, and on my guitar, he sounds like Eddie Van Halen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Eddie Van Halen's got magic fingers to begin with. But the point is that an artist, you really can carry over your style into most instruments. I mean, obviously you want to have a decent instrument, but to that point, yeah. you know, are you, are you trying to find a certain sound? Are you happy with your sound? Um, I mean, I was happy with my sound and then, um, I did email, uh, head rush and they gave me artist pricing for the mx5 so i'm trying to go a little more digital i guess and find like my own sound that way just because it seems to be a lot of people are going that way so you'll you'll be doing that for the rest of your life <laughs> don't yeah. chase it yeah. probably for the rest of your life yeah, yeah. once again eddie helen's the only person who came out was like what 16 or 17 is like got my sound that's it and that yeah. was it yeah um, that's, 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 the, that's the anomaly <laughs> what is who are some of your influences 
Um, I'm a huge LA Guns fan. I would say Tracy is like my biggest influence. I'm also a huge Skid Row fan. Um, Scotty Hill and then Brent Muscat from Faster Pussycat. And then I'm just big into like Vixen, Rat, like just almost every 80s band influences me. Mm -hmm. Well, I think each of those bands offer something. I mean, like say like Rat, the two guitar attack and is is in the way they play off each other in the songs yes is, is, is really brilliant if you break it down you know the, the way the songs are and because nothing overlaps you gotta have the right frequency and the right guitar which is like a lot of those bands do like guns and roses and ellie guns you got to make sure your guitars don't sound the same they're not the same frequency because then it gets kind of muddy when you play you know so are you writing your own stuff too yeah i do um I I've played with a couple people, you know, I've wrote some things with them, but I'm really looking for a band because other people have told me to kind of release like what I have, but I feel like no one wants to listen to anything instrumental. I'm looking for like a singer and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's I think there is it's, it's much more niche it is for 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 instrumental. It is more yeah. of a challenge, you know what I mean? And a band is a fuller like a, a visual package. I think it's a different audience. Like, you know, instrumentals, people just can, like, work or whatever. But some people want, like, a, you know, rocking band. Um, it wouldn't hurt to do both. You know, there's artists that do both. Yeah. You know, do an instrumental and release. I think, though, if you play with a play in a band for a while, it'll totally change your, your songwriting probably. Definitely. Unless you're the head of the band and you make everybody play your own stuff anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. So, like, how is the search going? Because, obviously, is it going to be, like, an online thing? Are you or How are you doing this? So, I have a couple people locally that I play with. And, um, but, I don't know, everyone nowadays seems to connect online. So, that's why I've been trying to grow my social media. Because if there is a band or someone looking for a guitar player, then it just opens another door. So, I don't know. I'm just kind of trying to keep my eyes out. Well, it's interesting. I mean, there's no wrong answer, and that's and especially being um, of the of the newer generation. Like, literally, COVID opened up the doors of like more bands that weren't doing recording remotely. Especially a lot of the older bands were like, "I'm not going to do it." And they have a lot of the older bands that you know, Def Leppard, that whole album I think was all done remote. You know. Yeah. And it's a good album, and I actually saw them play it. They're great, and so it's interesting that at that point, and then you know, at the other end, you, the younger generation are actually growing up in it. So it's gonna be more commonplace to either do a live band, do remote, do a mixer. You can you can guest on things. You can do different those projects like remote, which is some stuff nobody could ever do before. You know, the doors are really open for you at this point. Yeah, that is true. Although you're young, I don't even know if you're old enough to play in clubs. <laughs> Close. No. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm getting there. I'm 18, so. <laughs> no, you can play if you get. Uh, depends on where it is. Yeah, some clubs. Okay. Yeah, that's the problem. It depends. It depends on the clubs and if you're i think if you're an adult or a gig uh, yeah on a stage and there were it's like weird rules about it too so yeah <laughs> the um at this point though and this is interesting like with your social media and 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 actually you i was looking at it and it only goes a, day, a year or two right even going to go back like a year or two on yours on most yeah. of them you've grown up pretty fast yes it almost felt like overnight. <laughs> how? How? <laughs> so, um, back like literally a year ago, last year in October, um, I had like 500 followers actually, and then um, I posted a heart cover, and Nancy Wilson reposted it. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, I got all these followers, and then I had like a bunch of content I'd filmed. So I was like, okay, while I'm doing it, I guess I'll just go ahead and release it. And all of a sudden I shot up to like 4,000 followers and I was sitting there for a minute and then I shot up to 20,000. It what? was like, yeah, like I, I don't know what happened. I couldn't even explain it, but all of a sudden I woke up and I had all these followers and all this interaction. That's bananas. That is so awesome. <laughs> it was crazy. And it's interesting because there really is no formula. I mean, as the, people try having different ways of doing it. <laughs> so it's always interesting to hear like, where'd that come from all of a sudden? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that many people, people all at once? Yeah, because people ask me, and I'm like, it just kind of happened. Like, I don't, I don't have a secret. 
Yeah, it's more concerned of the flow. I don't think there is a secret for most things unless some people may have a ton of marketing until it gets beaten over someone's head. But yeah. it's pretty pretty apparent that you're pretty organic. You just kind of played. And that's just kind of curious. More like more if there's a song that opened the door for like a whole audience and they're like, oh, you know, and, and obviously the heart thing makes sense that, you know, especially if you think about it, you know, it's a female fronted band supporting another female playing guitar. Yeah. You know, so obviously they're open-minded. They're not like just, I think we've got the world's changed too. It's not just like 80s bands were pretty much male dominated. You know, it was really kind of hard for what, Vixen, uh, Hart, uh, Lita Ford, Edora, just like, yeah, a handful that could really join yet, you know, that were allowed to mix. So, so luckily it's not like that, but that's that gotta be a, a big thing. They were hard to kind of open the doors for you. Definitely. Now, to be so uh, talented and uh, shredding, how, how much are you practicing? Um, I try to practice. I'm going to be honest. I'm quite busy, so I don't get to practice as much as I like. But I try to sit down for at least 30 minutes a day. It doesn't usually work out, but I try. <laughs> I think, it, yeah, finding time to play guitar sometimes is hard just to practice. You know, I'll grab it sometimes just to talk to people because I've been doing a show so much lately. I was like, I don't even like calluses anymore in my hand. I'm like, <laughs> it doesn't play guitar. Because I, I, the irony of starting a show to support musicians, I'm like, I'm not playing my guitar anymore. Because <laughs> you're, you're, you know, you're on to the next interview, you're setting up, you're, you're editing, you're this and you're that. And I'm like, man. So, yeah, I've been grabbing my guitar now and playing it before and after and just practicing because, you know, you get busy. Um, but, but that's kind of how, how the world goes. Um, you know, I usually talk about influences because because you're so young, it's, it's a really different kind of uh, interview with you. Um, what like what would you say your through your three like favorite albums? And it's interesting because you because of your age, you know, that really have influenced you, like songs or like you know what I'm saying. Like who are the three big ones? Oh, that's always hard for me, but I'll have to go with I would say the first L.A. Guns. That's mm -hmm. just so classic. Um. I would say the first Skid Row album, mm -hmm. and then I guess I'd have to go with the first Faster Pussycat. That was like those were the three that I just I still play on repeat nonstop. That's interesting because um, the production on uh, the first one, the first Faster Pussycat, is like night and day to the second one, and actually the same thing with Skid Row too. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, some of the, actually, Greg was on, and he was talking about it. He considers that pretty much to be a demo. That album. <laughs> he did. He has, he actually has the receipts for it, too, somewhere, which is really wow. crazy. Yeah. It was just a – but then the band sat for the second album. I think they had a lot of time to practice and wait. Yeah. So that's all they did was practice and practice and practice, and that's where the album changed. I, I do like those three albums. I think they're raw. Um, yeah. I kind of wish the first Skid Row album was, was a little bit less polished. Like, I wish I had a, a little bit more of the production of the second album. Slaves the Grind. Yeah. That's probably my favorite Skid Row album. That's a great yeah. album. It's it's I think overall it's my favorite. Um although I'm excited to hear this whole new one with a new singer. Me too, yeah. I think it's a good fit. I think finally they got a good fit. The other guy, Johnny, was okay and, and I don't know the other guys there in it. I think they were cool. Nothing against them. But there's something with the energy of Eric that he just comes in, and it's like a brand new band, you know what I mean? And and actually and they can do justice to the old songs without being a karaoke band. That's the yeah, fine line. I think that's what it is. You got to be able to do the old stuff well, but do your own stuff and find a balance. I do yeah. agree with. So, and, and it's got a good attitude too. I mean, at this point, the guys do not need any shenanigans at this point in their life. They've been playing too long to deal with that. <laughs> so as far as you've got, let's talk about your endorsements. You've got, you're saying Gibson? Gibson, GHS, and Pariah pickups. Ah, so, oh, so you do have Pariah pickups. Okay. Yeah. So that's not stock. <laughs> No. <laughs> so that would I'm be getting... the, my earlier question. <laughs> Do you have guitar <laughs> stock? So that's a different. I am getting some for my Kramer. So I'm still waiting on that. Okay. Well, that's the whole thing. So what are your, what are the pride pickups in? Oh, my Gibson. Oh, your Gibson now? Okay. The Les Ball, yeah. Oh, interesting. Interesting. So that'd be cool. And then, so with endorsements, like what does it require you? Is it just. Um, so basically just promote them, tag them and everything, tell everyone I use their products, sort of to that effect. Mm -hmm. I don't know. They didn't really give me any sort of rules. <laughs> well, obviously you're a smart person. You realize, you know, obviously 
they want to be shown in a good light. I mean, that's, yeah. well, I mean, that's what you do. That's what your product is. You play guitar and you're, you're nice, you know, so, I mean, there's no danger in your, you know, <laughs> in your product placement. So like moving forward though. So, I mean, obviously you, you got a decent amount of followers. You're looking for bands. You've already got endorsed. You're 18. You got endorsements. You got a decent amount of followers. You got a good start. Yeah. What's your, uh, do you have a, a rough plan of domination or, or what are you going to do? I don't know. Uh, there's not much of a scene around where I live. So I was thinking about relocating in the future when that's possible. I don't, I don't know. I don't know for sure. All right. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. I've been, I don't know. There's so many options. <laughs> well, yeah. And, and, and it's interesting because the, it's changed like LA used to be the spot not mm -hmm. so much now especially for newer bands I mean there's a there's a there's a scene but it's not the same scene like as it used to be and then there's um and then Nashville kind of yeah. been a scene for a while and it, excuse me it is a different type of scene and then the Vegas is the scene it's clear, because it has a new scene coming out you know there's not a lot of places to go really no there's not unless you have a full band you get success and you go there and record and you tour and it doesn't really matter where you're from. Yeah. Which, which is kind of interesting. That's kind of like where my questions are based on with you being a newer generation attacking this music thing. I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's different because your, your influences are 30 years. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like 12 years before you were born albums were coming out that you're, you know, influenced by, you know, um, Country, I can see country rock, so props to your dad for bringing you into the rock. <laughs> Thanks. Definitely. <laughs> um, and I imagine you and your dad probably go to a lot of shows together, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Where can people find you on all your media? Oh. I'll, I can put some of the links up, but like, where are you? Are you doing the same thing? Are you do like playing out songs for people? Are you taking requests? Are you doing anything like that? I have. To I have people that'll like comment randomly, but uh, yeah, I would love to take requests. Um, you can find me on basically any social media. I just got on Facebook um, and YouTube. So I'm trying to like broaden my horizons, I guess, for where you can find me. All right. Very cool. I'll put the links up and I'll, um, I'm going to thank you for being on the show. It's been awesome. Thanks.